It's been one year now since we've had our chickens, and so I wanted to make this video today to talk about everything related to chicken care, what it's like to own chickens, and what are the kind of things that you're expected or need to do on a daily, weekly, or monthly, or even yearly basis if you want to own chickens. So one of the first major things that everyone as a chicken owner needs to do on a daily basis is check for eggs. So let's start with that by going into the coop right now. So let's go ahead and take a look inside and see if we have any eggs today. Uh, the way we secure our actual egg hutch is by having a carabiner that locks. So it's nice, it's just an extra little security feature. You always want a hasp and latch because that'll make sure that it's raccoon proof. But I'm going to pop it open. <laughs> That's the sound of chirp. Uh, doesn't like me coming in here getting her eggs, I guess. And we actually do have two eggs in here. So, yep. <laughs> it's really funny, if you have two egg hutches, they'll still end up mostly using just one. So. You want to make sure that you have at least two egg hutches, even though they're only going to probably use one. But occasionally we actually do see that they use both. So these eggs here, this one is Chirps, so that is the Buff Orpington. And then this one here is from Peep, which is the Easter Egger. In terms of eating quality, I like Peep's eggs the most because they are the largest. They have really large yolks and they taste really good. All of the eggs are really fantastic. They're definitely better than anything you could get at the store. On a normal egg laying schedule, we're getting an average of probably three a day. And I'm saying normal because things like molting, changing their feathers out, or going broody will actually affect how many eggs you get. So let's talk about the next tip, which is feeding and making sure your chickens have water. So now we're inside the enclosed run of the chicken coop. This is an area that can be fully enclosed and the chickens are 100% safe from anything. Now, I wanted to talk about the feeders, which are inside here. And this is actually the old feeding system that we had up until literally two days ago. And it's worked actually pretty well. And it's very cheap, you just get these little attachments. I'll put a link in the description. Fill this with food, and then they could get inside, peck their food, and that just works great. But we originally had four chickens, and we now have seven. When you introduce new chickens to your flock, you want to make sure that they're not going to compete over something that they already know. So all the older chickens know about this feeder and they know they have a preferred spot to eat from, which is why what we decided to do is actually upgrade to this Coopworks feeder. So the nice thing about this guy is that it has two feed ports on every single face, which I believe totals to eight different feeding ports. So there's now way more opportunity for the chickens to choose different ports. None of them have used this before up until now, so it's un uncharted territory essentially. <laughs> There's no pecking order when it comes to feeding from this. The other cool thing about this one is that you could fit two whole bags of food in here, no problem. So if I fill this up, I probably don't have to fill it up again for months. So that's really fantastic. The other thing when it comes to feeding your chickens is you want to have a source of calcium. This is oyster shell, so this is giving them a source of calcium. The last thing that you really want to make sure you're providing your chickens is grit. In this case, they probably get a lot of grit naturally from just pecking around outside. But this is just basically crushed granite and helps them digest things like greens. Now, when it comes to the actual watering system, we still need to work on that. We're probably going to change it a little bit. But what we have right now is just a five gallon bucket with uh, four nipples on it. And the way this works is they tap on it and water comes out. They peck at that and they get their water. I want to get something bigger because this can go pretty fast in the, in the hot months. But for now it's working great and all the chickens know how to use this type of watering system. So now let's move on to the next topic which will be out there. One of the things that you really want to consider when you decide to get chickens is that they really like having a lot of space. Most of the suggestions you see online say that they don't need that much space. So our coop for example, the enclosed run is somewhere in the 8 by 10 range, so 8 by 10 feet. And that's fine for four chickens if they spend some of their time in there, but not all their time. So we wanted to give them a nice big area that they could explore and hang out in during the daytime. It gives them a lot of different benefits. The first is that they get to forage, they get their grit naturally by digging around. They get to eat things like insects and bugs that they find out here. So it's really nice for them. And they also get access to sun when they want it. And very importantly, shade. So chickens can overheat very easily. So one of the things that's really important when it comes to owning chickens is having areas that are constantly shaded so that they always have that option. So that's why we have these trees over here. We also have this umbrella set up back here so they could also come down here. It's both shade for us and the chickens. And actually one of the things that maybe is a little bit understated is that you wanna make sure that your chickens actually have space to dig around. So chickens like to do dust baths and especially when it's hot, they'll sort of dig down and until they get to the cooler soil 
and nestle themselves in there. So you want to make sure they have enough space, you want to make sure they have open ground, and that they have plenty of shade. If your chickens are panting with their mouth open, like literal panting, that means that they're overheating and you want to make sure that they have access to water. The other thing you can do is give them frozen treats. That's kind of like the gist of giving them plenty of outdoor space and making sure they have shade. The next thing we want to talk about is how to deal with a broody chicken. Every chicken owner at some point will experience a broody hen. So a broody hen is one that really wants to actually hatch an egg. And so what you'll see is that your chicken will go in their nesting box and they'll sit in there all day. They won't lay any eggs and they'll probably puff themselves up and start making really funny sounds. That's when you have a broody chicken. So the broody chicken will kind of block the nesting box from other chickens. They'll generally be in a more of a bad mood, I guess, and they won't lay any eggs. So you want to kind of kick them out of this broody cycle. The easiest way by far that we found to end a broody chicken cycle is getting a dog crate or something similar and keeping the chicken in there with food and water, isolated from the other chickens and isolated from the nesting box. The whole idea is that if they're sitting and nestled in something like a nesting box, they'll stay nice and warm and that keeps their broodiness going. But by isolating them and giving them nowhere to roost or nest, then they can't really remain broody for as long. So grab yourself a crate, throw it in somewhere safe and make sure they have food and water and hopefully two to three days, they'll end their broody cycle. And you wanna make sure you stay on top of that because every time we waited for it to naturally happen, it's taken weeks. So dog crate, broody chicken, something you're gonna have to deal with in the future. One of the biggest major things that you're gonna have to deal with when you have chickens is actually maintaining and cleaning up after them. So in the indoor run, what we do is we throw these wood shavings out and every two months or so when it starts smelling or we see a lot of flies, we'll come in, rake it all up and throw that in their compost. And then we'll just throw in some new pine shavings and kind of refresh the whole area. But the bigger aspect of clean out is the actual deep litter inside the coop. So let's go ahead and take a deep dive into how to actually clean your deep litter coop. So here's what the litter pile looks like up close. I'm gonna just kind of scoop some out with a stick. You can see that some parts are quite wet. And um, so for instance, right here is the primary roosting bar that all the chickens sleep on at night. And so that's where <laughs> the most action is, so to speak. And so in this exact area, it is the worst in terms of how wet it is but a lot of it is actually probably fairly dry. But at this point, it's just a good time to refresh it. So that's kind of what it looks like at the moment right now. The tools that we're going to be using to clean this out are a wheelbarrow, probably also a large concrete mixing tub, a snow shovel to get out some of the finer bits at the bottom. We have a couple different rakes we're gonna probably end up using. And then I'm using the manure fork, which is aptly named for this job. The other thing I want to mention is that it's a really good idea, actually probably I should say it's mandatory, that when you're getting inside this kind of situation with all the dust and all the debris from the chickens, you want to be wearing a good mask. So I'm going to be wearing this the whole time and I'll probably also put on some safety goggles and be wearing gloves while I'm working. So with that said, let's go ahead and start scooping this out. So you can see why you definitely want to be wearing a mask. It's quite a bit of dust here. So we've decided we're gonna probably fill this black bin, transfer that into the wheelbarrow or just carry it over, it's not that heavy. And we're actually going to be composting this for a few years. Before I add this next dump of litter into this compost bin, I'm actually gonna water this on the center setting because I wanna make sure this gets really well hydrated so it could properly rot and break down in the pile. We've now moved most of the chicken litter over here into this compost bin. And so right now this is essentially 95% chicken litter. <laughs> so this should be quite hot. And this is going to be the current active pile at my place. So any new clippings or cuttings I take from the garden, I'm going to be adding to this. I'm going to let that mature all throughout this whole entire year because it is chicken manure. You wanna let it compost a bit longer. I might talk about that more in a future video, but for now I'm gonna throw this top little board on. Wow, so this is steaming hot, very active compost. So I'm gonna pop that right into the center here and then cover it back in. And hopefully some of those bacteria that are already present in there will now colonize this pile and start heating it up very quickly. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is take a small scoop. This is probably about a gallon's worth of finished compost that I've been purchasing. And this is a manure based compost. So I'm hoping that this will have some other microbes maybe that will help break down this manure a little faster even. And that's all there is to it. I'm going to water this in pretty deeply right now. And then we're gonna go back over to the chicken coop and check it out. So the chicken coop is fully emptied out. 
but you'll notice we actually saved one bucket of the litter down here. So a deep litter system is actually essentially a compost pile. So when you're adding a new layer of litter, or in this case, an entirely new batch of litter, you wanna save some of the old litter that you were using before to help kickstart that composting process in your new deep litter. So that's why we've saved this. We're going to be adding it in. I'm not sure if we're gonna add it in at the base level or mix it in with the new litter, but we're definitely going to be adding that in. But for now, I wanna show you inside the coop and talk a little bit about what I see. And I'm actually really happy with what I see. There's a little bit of water damage on the back there, but that's mostly a seam that needs to get just basically caulked. None of the damage is from the chicken litter itself, and it looks really nice inside. So let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of the coop. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look inside here, see what we find. And what we find is that the floor that we put in is holding up really, really well. So this floor was just basic plywood, but we did, I believe, four layers of water-based urethane and that's what's basically keeping it looking so fresh right now. It looks like there's zero damage on anywhere over there. The floor is totally solid. So this is the only thing that we're going to need to deal with. But it turns out that right behind that beam right there is actually a uh, seam on the other side of the wall that's kind of open. So we're gonna just run a bead of caulk along that and that should fix that problem. But other than that, the coop is looking really nice. So we're not gonna have to do any deep cleaning really. We're just gonna go ahead and add some new litter in. I just wanna mention one thing before we move on is that you might have noticed that this litter is really quite dry and that's not necessarily bad, but it's not ideal. Generally, when you're doing the deep litter method, it should be actually composting. So it should be becoming more crumbly and broken down. But the deal is, is that we built our coop in mind with expansion. So we only had four chickens in here, but we built it for somewhere in the order of eight chickens. And so by having a large coop and having the same amount of litter, it just never really got wet enough on its own, so it never really broke down and composted very well. We probably could have added some moisture to help speed it up or added less litter and mixed it to help break it up more, but this is what it is right now. I think with the fact that we're adding three new chickens, it's going to definitely be adding a lot more moisture and should break down faster and properly compost in the future. So that's just a little mention. This is probably not what most people's deep litter is gonna look like, and it's probably not what it should look like. So like I mentioned previously, we saved this for a reason and I'm going to be adding it back into the coop right now. And then we're gonna add the new litter on top. So this is going to serve as our base coat that's essentially inoculating the new litter pile. And I guess I should mention at this point why we decided to switch to hemp bedding. Hemp bedding is very low dust and it breaks down very rapidly. It also does a very good job of absorbing moisture. So volume per volume of this versus the other wood shavings that we used previously, this is going to last longer, hold more moisture, and reduce the odor, odor in the long run. And this is an industrial hemp bedding. You could buy it from someone like Carolina Coops, and that's a trusted source. That's what it looks like. It looks kind of funny, kind of woody, like the inside of like a sunflower, for example. That's kind of what that material looks like. But this is a very absorbent, very easy to break down material, so it's perfect for a chicken coop deep litter system. Here's what it looks like with that litter that we saved with one bag of hemp litter on top of it. So you can see we have roughly six inches here, which is where you wanna start when you're doing a deep litter system. The idea is that as they're pooping and peeing and doing all that, you just keep throwing in more litter right on top. And that's going to be what creates that deep litter system. Now, the other thing we're probably going to do this year, which we kind of stopped last year, is probably stir it more often. Now that we saw the old litter wasn't very well composted, we wanna make sure that since we're in an arid climate, we're going to be stirring it up more often and make sure that the moisture gets distributed. So that should make this deep litter very fruitful, and especially since we're gonna be adding three new chickens in this coop. The last thing I wanted to end with is to actually remind you to spend time with your chickens. So here's Midnight, she's a black copper Moran's, and what I have in my hand is a bunch of dried grubs. Chickens really, really love these grubs, and spending time with them lets them know that you're their friend and that they can trust you. So it makes it really easy to pick them up when you need to or if you have a problem to solve. And if you need to find your chickens, <laughs> getting them used to grubs is really great because then you shake the tub and they, account they will come running. So that's the last thing I wanted to end. Hanging out with your chickens is great for your mental health. It's also great for your chickens because then they become more bonded with you. So that's what it's like to have chickens and a couple of the things that you might encounter if you decide to own chickens. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.